Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Seven Wonders Battle, which is the latest expansion for the excellent, excellent, one of my favorite games of all time, Seven Wonders. And this is, I think, its third expansion after Cities and Leaders, and by far this is the best one. The other two expansions, I was like, ah, they were okay, they, you know, they've, they've got some good points, but this one is spectacular. And I'm going to do a very quick run through today to try to show you how that is. I'm not going to do a full run through because I've done a full run through of Seven Wonders and the other two expansions, which you can go check out if you want to ch click that link right there. What is it, Dob? Dob, what? What? What do you want? She's sitting here staring at me intently as if I was about to give her food or something, which I'm certainly not going to do. Good girl, Dob. Okay. You're still not getting anything. I don't know what you think you're getting. All right. Sorry, folks. Uh, it's just very distracting. The beagle eye. She's giving me the beagle eye. Right. What was I just saying? Oh, yeah. So, anyway, um, if, you're, if you're still here, I guess you haven't clicked that link. So, let's start actually showing what Babel adds to the game. And to do that, I've actually started playing a game, and I'm just about to finish the first stage. There's only one more card that's going to be played. And hopefully this turn will actually be able to demonstrate the two new features that are added the tower, and the great works. These are the two new things. Now, these are separate modules. You can turn one or both of them on when you're playing, and they mix and match with all the other expansions, just as you would expect. And I'm playing with both right now. So, here's the situation. The Tower of Babel is a... Well, you know, there's another side of this board if you're playing with four players. I've got the three-player side, although I'm playing two-player. And in a two-player game, you ignore one of these spaces to build. So I've just put the... Here's all the tiles that, that are not in the game. So you can see there's a whole bunch of them, a wide variety of effects the tower has. And these are the two places that Jen and I can build in in a two-player game. In a three-player game, there's three places to build. With more players, you flip the board over and there's more places to build. As, you, as we literally build the tower higher and higher. And every time you build a tower tile, you contribute to the building of the tower, it adds a new universal law that affects everybody. Now, at the beginning of the game, everybody engages in a draft much like leaders, where which will determine what tower tiles you have at the beginning. And after the draft was over, I ended up with this one, and Jen doesn't know I have this one. This is the first one I grabbed before she could find out. This one basically invalidates double resource spaces. So only single generators work. Doubles don't. So if this law ever goes into effect, for instance, the dummy player over here and the, the Egyptian player has a double card, this will no longer generate goods. So, if you know that you have this, you might want to focus on not getting double generators. And you know, in the second age, there's going to be a lot more double generators. Because then, when you put this law into effect, all of a sudden, a lot of the goods generation doesn't work anymore. And that will affect everybody in the game until this law goes away. So this is good This is good for me to know that there's the potential this will happen over the course of the game and nobody else knows. I also have this one. If I build this, then everybody, every build, has access to one glass, carpet, or parchment, which can be hugely beneficial as well. And then this other one I ended up with is an interesting one. Normally, uh, what this is saying is instead of, uh, whenever you want to build a blue card and you have to pay the cost, instead of paying the cost in stone or whatever it might be, uh, you don't pay with resources, you pay with money. So this makes blue buildings much more expensive to build. Now in the first age, that doesn't matter because all blue buildings in the first age are free. But in the second and the third age, well, that could change things up. I mean, you know, um, in the third age, the blue buildings get, be, can be really complex, requiring a whole bunch of resources. But if I get this thing into play, if I get this built in the third age, suddenly blue buildings don't cost any resources. They cost a comparable amount of money. So these are three game-changing rules that I could put into play. And the way I do it is, when I choose whatever card I'm going to play, you know, like always, I can discard it instead of playing it. And instead of making money, you know, you can still discard to make three bucks, but instead you can discard to get one of these laws into effect. And the more laws get played, this one comes out and then this one comes out later, the next one to come out will cover up the first one. And they keep covering each other up and the tower gets higher and higher. Now that doesn't really happen that much in a two-player game, but you can kind of imagine with more players, the tower will get higher. Now Jen, she's got some as well. And she's actually thinking about playing one of those very soon, so you'll see that coming up. Now the other new feature is, I think they're called the Great Works. Is that what it's called? I forget. Um, the 
great projects, the great projects. As you can see, there is a whole bunch of them. There's a, 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 a stack of tons of these things, but every time you play, there are only going to be three. There's going to be one for the first age, one for the second age, and one for the third age. And the great project of the first age is cranes, developing crane technology. Now, the way this works is, you can, you can see that the cranes is a green card. And you know later on, and you know if I let's see, this is a card that's not going to be in the game, but this would be a low, an H three one that is a blue one for as an example. Now, the color of this means ah, let's see. Actually, I should should have set this up a little bit better. Let's just these are the three that I'm actually playing in the game, and here's all the other ones that aren't in the game. Let's just get these out of the way. All right. So I can see I've got H three and H two here right now. Oh, and I shouldn't peek at those. Oh, but I just peeked. Oh well. Um, Right now, we're focusing on this. Whenever somebody tries to build a green building, as you can see here, there's a reminder, whenever somebody tries to build a green building, you know, which is a science building, if they pay one extra dollar, they can contribute to this great project. And as you can see, are already, Jen has done that. Earlier in this age, she built this, and she had to pay me because I had the glass to do it. As you can see, I just really focused on getting a bunch of stuff, and then I made a lot of money because, um, yeah, because people need it. All right, so anyway, um, so Jen built this, and when she did, she paid an extra dollar to contribute to crane building. And there's proof of that because at the beginning of the age, there were two of these here. If both of these were taken, that means the cranes were successfully built. Jen took one of them by paying a dollar, and so she has contributed to the building of cranes. Now, Jen, if she could build another green and pay another dollar, she could take the other one as well. Or alternatively, I could take the other one if I build a green and take a dollar. But so far, I haven't done it yet. And um, you know, I've been hoping to do it because your know, time's almost up. Because here's what happens. If the, let's say Jen built both greens, right? You know, you know, Jen built two greens in the first age and she was able to get and pay two bucks and she got both of these. If the project is successful, then everybody who didn't contribute, well, nothing happens. And everybody who does contribute gets this benefit. And this benefit is really nice. This is a token you can trade in at any point in the game to build a building without having to pay any cost. And you can imagine, towards the end of the game, how valuable that is. So if this were the case, if Jen had built two greens, she would get two of these. And that's later in the game, two buildings she builds totally for free. And all she had to do is pay one extra buck and get a green built. But now as it happens, she hasn't yet. There is one green, and in fact, Jen, you know, we're, okay, we're, so that situation, or I should say, on the other hand, if the thing is not completed, then it's bad. Anybody who did work on it does not suffer the consequences. But anybody who failed to contribute, like so if this thing doesn't get built at the end of this age, Jen, well, she, she blew a buck, but that means she doesn't get punished for failing to build it. I will get punished. And my punishment for this for cranes is one of my brown resource, in fact, my only brown resource card will get destroyed. Now, if I didn't have a brown resource card, then I wouldn't care. You know, I'd say the heck with that. I mean, it'd be nice to get this benefit, but you know, I mean, I, but I wouldn't be particularly brown. But fortunately, I have arranged things because Jen just handed me back my cards, and there it is. Here's the last screen, and it was tough. I mean, we've had this for the whole time, and we've also had the parchment. And I took a gamble last turn and took the, did the parchment myself, and then I was hoping Jen would give this back so that I'd be able to build it now on the final turn. And she did, so that was good. Although I'm gonna kind of do it in a funky way because I've got the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. So anyway, so let's go on ahead and play and show how all this works out. So I've got my final two cards, I've gotta pick one, and I wanna get this green built because if I build a green, then I will contribute as well and everybody will benefit and I won't have my brown card destroyed because of the wrath of, well, whoever gets pissed off. But, but my um, my middle power play the last card of each age. I don't. I mean, I if I can do this, if I can get this built now, then I'll be able. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to play this card. And now um, you know. And then so this was the last card. It's going to get discarded like normal because you know there's of the seven cards you play, one of them never gets played. All right. So I'm going to play this card. That's my choice. And then this was still in my hand. Jen, let's see, she's playing for the dummy this round, you know, for, for, the, for the third city, the free city. And so she gets another card. And now this is the third city's card that's not going to get played. And let's see, now Jen is going to, right, <clears throat> right, 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 right. 
Jen is going to trash one of these cards and she is actually going to build one of her portions of the tower. And this is going to work out really nicely. Jen is going to, what does she want to trash? She, oh, um, she'll, she'll give this one, the third city, we'll build this so that you know there's more resources available. So that's what she chooses for the third city. For herself, eh, she doesn't care, she'll trash um, this. She'll trash this card. And this is the card she didn't play. Okay, so everybody reveals. The, the free city is getting another one of these things. And you know, I had handed this to Jen. I have been hoping throughout the entire first age that Jen would build this for herself. Because, remember, I've got the secret thing that I can make it, you know, suddenly not work anymore. But Jen didn't put it up there. Although it's interesting, still, if I make this law a, a law of the land, then um, these two cards don't provide for anybody. So, you know, and that's actually really interesting because uh, that means there's less clay and less stone. And, you know, maybe Jen has to come over to me to get the clay if I take this clay offline. Although she can still get the clay from the free city. But anyway, so... So Jen uh, chose that for the free city. For herself, she is discarding this, and she is going to put the first law into effect. And now this is an interesting one. This is one that whenever you suffer a military defeat, instead of taking one military defeat token, you take two. And Jen waited to do this. I didn't know she had that, but this is law on the land. It affects everybody now. And you will notice both the free city and Jen have military, and I do not. So, normally, because they're both higher military, I would take negative one, but now I'm going to take, or, you know, negative two, I'd take two of these. Now I'm going to take four of them. I'm going to lose four points because Jen slipped this law in. And it's ironic, the only reason Jen was able to build this is because I handed this to her. On the last turn, I handed her this and this, hoping that she would give me this back because she was desperate to build this. And she did, but what I didn't know was she had that tower up her sleeve. Right. So anyway, so that was um, Jen, so the dummy player. Jen has sacrificed one to put a law into effect. And I am basically this, I am building my second age. All right, and it's going to be expensive. I have the glass, but I have no wood. And so I am going to spend two. I'm going to buy two wood from the free city because he's got a wood, but I also have to give two wood to Jen, two money to Jen to buy from her. So that's how I got the two wood. But that means I can play my last card. So I will get to play this card as well, which is uh, the green. And let's see, you can see I have the parchment, so I knew it. So I can build that. And I have now participated as well just under the wire. And so there's uh, the other card that got discarded, and we have finished the first age. Okay, since the um, project was completed, everybody who contributed to it gets the reward. So both Jen and I get one of these super awesome one-time build everything. And, um, and nobody suffers a penalty because we got the thing finished. So I don't lose my, my, um, my brown resource building. Okay, let's see, what else? So that's that. Now we resolve military like normal. Jen and the Free City are both tied. They both hit me. And because of this law, instead of me taking one, I take, or instead of me taking two, I take four. So I've just lost four points. That is not very good for me. Okay, so that was the military resolved. And oh wait, yeah, this was the other card that didn't get played. Right. And so um, that was that. So we have finished the first stage. And, you see, actually, I will go a little bit into the second age. Or actually, will I? Hmm. I see. Now, the thing is, you might go the entire game without building any laws at all. Because you don't have very many actions. And building a law takes time. And, um, you, know, you know, it's not making you money or doing anything else. So, it might, if, if, it might be worthwhile for me to, to still play this law. But the bigger thing is i got to worry about military because now if I stay behind in military, it's hitting me for double. But we're starting the second age, so we now get to see what is the great project of the second age. It is a river port. And now this is whenever we build yellow buildings, if we pay a buck and a carpet, we can contribute to the building of the river port. And at the end of the second age, everybody who contributed makes six bucks for every contribution they did. And everybody who failed to contribute, if the river port is not completed, loses all of their money at the end of the round. So if you can work it such that you have no money at the end of the round, 
then you don't particularly care. But on the flip side, if you can contribute, you can make a lot of money. So, but you're gonna need carpet. And I'm actually pretty happy about that because I am the only place in town for carpet. And maybe Jen, in the second age, one of those double cards is gonna come out that will give out carpet. But then I can um, put this out so that it will be invalidated and mine will be the only place to get carpet in the world. So if Jen wants to contribute to the Riverport, she'll have to come to me. Uh, you know, to, and pay me for my carpet. So this could still come in handy. And then we begin the second age. Let's see, so there's my cards. I have no idea what they are. I just like pre-shuffle them and pre-stack them so I wouldn't have to worry about all that. And we're ready to go. And uh, let's see, what did I get? All right. Oops, and I actually, uh, silly me, I took the victory tokens. <laughs> I'm sure people were saying, hey, that's kind of sneaky. I needed to take the uh, failure tokens, the uh, military loss tokens, not the military victory tokens. There we go, there's my negative four points. <laughs> All right, so now we're, um, you know, there's no longer a big push to build green because now we want to build yellows if possible. And I did get a yellow. I did get a marketplace. So uh, if, I, if I build that, you know, I could go on ahead and choose this right now because I have access to carpet, I've still got some money, and I could contribute to the river port. You know what, what the heck, let's go on ahead and say I'm going to do that. That's the card I'm choosing for myself. And the rest go to Jen. Let's see, and now, so she is controlling the free city, so she draws an extra card, one to play for her, one to play for the free city. And let's see. So, here's a yellow card, but is she willing? Oh, but here's a yellow card that would give her access to carpet. Now, she needs, oh, here's another yellow card. Brown, all right, oh, here's some military. Jen really wants to make sure, above all else, that she stays in the lead on military because of this law. And either I want to catch up with her on military, or I want to get two more laws put into effect so that this one will get eliminated. But let's see, can Jen build this thing? Um, right, uh, so she could pay. Or now, the other thing, Jen, um, oh, right, right, right. So Jen doesn't have much money. And, but she can buy um, your regular goods from either of us for one dollar less, and she can also buy regular goods from the free city for for free because she has two discounts. If she puts this law into effect, this is um, another discount everywhere all around. Now Jen, of course, won't make money for getting stuff, but that means she could buy stuff from anybody. But actually, I don't think she wants to do this because she does not want to put this law into effect because she's getting a lot of discounts. She doesn't want me to have uh, discounts. If at all possible. Now, here's the other interesting thing. For, um, building these not only puts a law into effect that hopefully benefits you and nobody else, but it is worth points at the end of the game. The more laws, and because we have three at the end of the game, if we've built all three of our laws, I think we, I think that's ten points at the end of the game. Is that right? Where is it? Uh, ba, 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 ba. Uh, the uh, end of the game. If you only build one, that's two points. So Jen has scored two points by building this. If you build two of your tiles, five points. If you build all three of your tiles, it's ten points. So that's another big deal, trying to spend the time to get all of your Babel tiles built, while also trying to meet the needs of the great work so you don't have to suffer the consequences of not contributing, while also doing all the stuff you normally do, trying to get your ages done, trying to you know, focus on science or you know, getting blue cards built, whatever it might be. So there is a lot more that is going on now, a lot more to think about. And um, let's see. And you know what? Actually, I think that is enough. I will stop there. I've shown you, um, you know, putting one of these in play and, and how it can have a big impact. I've shown contributing to the great works and how that can have a big impact because now both of us have the opportunity to build for free. And you can see there are a ton of new tokens that come in this game with all these new special powers. A permanent addition of two to your military. You know, um, victory points or, you know, uh, for you know, there's lots and lots of stuff in here. But those are the basics. Wow, that took 20 minutes. Shoot. Well, it was quicker than I, longer than I thought, but still, you have a pretty good idea, hopefully, of what Babel adds. You've seen it a little bit in action. If you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit the button that's on screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.